So I greet everyone uh, at Urban Forum, and uh, we are discussing new practices, new approaches uh, in different spheres. Last presentation, last and current uh, speech talks about uh, talks about the work with heritage and a last uh, uh, presentation of Alexei Ginsburg uh, was uh, speaking about one of the heritages which is pretty vulnerable in our cities according to our cultural and legal aspects. And now we will talk about another type of uh, heritage which is not really surrounded with big care, but uh, probably we will talk about the uh, uh, wooden heritage of our cities and um, our conversation will be built around the uh, experience of Nizhny Novgorod and about and around interaction of different bodies, municipal bodies and administration of the city and uh, representatives of activists. And uh, here you can see Andrei Kachetkov, who is the uh, founder of well-known Tom Sawyer Fest, and then Daria Shod Shodina sits. Um, it's, she is the executive director of Art Ravine in Tuska Oblast, and it's considering some kind of an activist uh, activity and others. And Daria Shorina is the head of the Institute of the Development of the uh, City Environment of Niz Nizhny Novgorod Oblast, and she represents administration of the city. So we will start with the presentation of Mr. Kachitkov, which is devoted to Tom Sawyer Fest. Greetings to everyone. Uh, it so happens that within four years of existing of uh, Tom Sawyer Fest, for the first time, I'm speaking about that in Moscow. However, I was sharing in other cities about that. And so in a nutshell, what we're doing, we have uh, such a bottom initiative when we started in Samara region, when the governor was saying that we had to knock down all the uh, old buildings and to uh, put new nice buildings with the towers and with steeples. So we are restoring facades of the uh, buildings together with restorators and volunteers. So we are remodeling and restoring historical buildings. And we are trying to uh, put those uh, interesting, delicate art objects into city environment. So in a nutshell, about some kind of a soulless numbers, this uh, fest which was started in Samara, and now it will be held in more than 40 cities in Russia. And even in Kyrgyzia, in the city Karakom, was, this uh, fest was launched. So uh, within several seasons, we've restored about 54 facades, and we uh, attracted uh, about 5 million rubles from uh, out-of-budget sources for materials, for tools, for everything else. And uh, several thousand people uh, participated in that activity. And also, we have volunteers which already got married in our movement. And so we uh, started biologically multiplying, multiplication of our volunteers. We have two kids now in our movement, newborn kids. So at first, our uh, emphasis was on architecture. And then we decided to go to people in the first place, not to the buildings. And now we are picking probably not the best and interesting uh, projects in terms of uh, construction, but which are very interesting from the historical point of view. For example, in this picture, you can see that this man looks out of the window at the volunteers 
and he was waiting for them to stop their work. This lady, Alona, she's coordinator of the movement in Samara. She helps elderly people, and her house is uh, at the same time like a volunteer base. Uh, on the other hand, it sits in the downtown of the city, and she says that if they move me out, so then I won't be able to deal with my volunteer activity. And the second moment that we're limited in resources, Tomsu Fest starts in any city with zero rubles and kopecks. And we're trying to engage some new business partners from crowdfunding to collect some money. So at first, we are promising the little thing, like uh, remodeling of facades, which we'll be able to do. And now we've come to such a stage that in Kazan, they will even uh, construct new communications uh, within the framework of uh, Tom Sawyer first. But you see, it's better to make some surprises because otherwise uh, people are not really believing you because they've been cheated for many times. They've been promised a lot before. And we've got six main coordinators in our Tom Sawyer Fest. Some people work with foreign volunteers, some uh, work at the platform, at the site all the time. I'm mostly speaking, you see, using my tongue. I'm traveling around, and when you see some person uh, tries to put a blanket only on himself, so then he will be in dreadful position. And so we're trying to share all the interests and activities. Uh, so we have a special, specific schedule where uh, the person after his work day can come by, drink tea, or he can stay like for five years and help us out. For example, in Samara City, Yelena Lapushkina came to us as usual volunteer and she worked with us and uh, so and then we're trying to engage in our heritage movement different communities for example jazz community in samara is rather developed direction so they're playing in the yards of those historic buildings and so we're organizing some concerts in winter time and inviting people and also our uh, community is built horizontally as well it's not like we have special headquarters in samara which gives orders and etc but we have 118 different coordinators from different cities and we are operating different time zones so that's why uh, we're using different technologies to cover our activity. And we're not talking about just some abstract volunteers, uh, but those people were uh, involved in the movement by the call, calling of their heart, you see. For example, in Samara, you, uh, some guys from Samara, they uh, renovated the building in Samara, and you saw this picture. So that's why we try to pay attention uh, to the explanation and explanatory work with volunteers why we need to reach this result. And in general, it's called festival. It's not just like some kind of a, a labor, hard labor uh, for getting results, but we're trying to get some fellowship, to drink tea, to have fun. And so then the houses are being transformed as the output of our activity. And you see, we're helping also the owners of those old wooden buildings, which lack some competences and expertise, and they lack some funds to uh, manage and handle their property. And so we try to put some humane uh, slant to the uh, relationship with those people and as we know already that remodeling of the facade could change a lot of things it's out of our experience so to the right you can see Costa Lebetev one of the tenant from Kazan buildings so 
And in his case, uh, our volunteers help him to restore facade of his building. But as of now, he casts everyone out and he remodels this uh, roof by himself, this ceiling by himself. And he says, I don't need any help. I will handle myself. So, and I have this short question to you before the next speech. So in your speech, you already highlighted that uh, there is a possibility. And as we know, uh, in Tom Sawyer Fest, there is some conflict between you and tenants, residents, how they treat the history and background of the uh, objects. Or, for example, how city hall and city administration treats this historical heritage. Uh, you see, the status of monument, of heritage, it's a relative thing. And you said that historical thing is not really um, the most important thing from the point of view of uh, experts or law. So how do you handle those kind of conflicts? So at first, we were uh, going to deal with some kind of environmental uh, city houses, buildings, which are not related to the cultural heritage, but our destiny led us to this kind of a activity where we uh, face cultural heritage buildings, and we have pretty sad picture with Kaluga City, where uh, we dealt with the object, but it didn't have the protective status from historical side of view. So it could be knocked down uh, any time. So how volunteers could deal with this kind of an object if we can lose it any time, any moment. So as of now, Ministry of Culture develops some kind of a law uh, for the access of volunteers to the cultures of her, uh, of volunteers to the cultural heritage objects. So right now we're kind of in legal vacuum, but still the message is like that. Volunteers shouldn't work uh, at the objects with cultural heritage where real professionals work with some funding from the government. About hundred thousand or uh, objects won't be financed in the nearest future from the budget, you see? So that's why we have to compete with the uh, restoration specialists anyways. Thank you very much. Now I'm giving the floor to Daria Shorina, uh, head of the Institute of the Development of the City Environment of Nizhny Novgorod Oblast. It's a very historical city, and can you tell us what uh, is working for you as for the working with the cultural heritage. So in Nizhny Novgorod and in Nizhny Novgorod Oblast, we have uh, seen such a positive trend for keeping and protection of historical environment. So it was started from the end of 2017, where when uh, the administration of the region came by Gleb Nikitin, new governor appeared and he was restoring all the uh, agenda of the development of the uh, city environment and etc. In April 2017, uh, they created the spe special institute and I'm the head of this institute. And the purpose of it to organize the new level uh, comfortable city environment in 52 cities and towns of Nizhny Novgorod Oblast and to develop projects which are related to the uh, development of culture in our cities and towns. And one of the tests of ours is the project on redevelopment of historical environment of Nizhny Novgorod. And Nizhny Novgorod was picked as a pilot city, uh, testing ground for the program which will be replicated and duplicated in other towns and cities, not only in Nizhny Novgorod Oblast, but also in other cities of Russia. So that's why I was going to tell you how we started. So Nizhny Novgorod um, and its administration, we were not sitting on, an, on our hands, so we have been taking actions towards 
um, preserving and handling our architectural heritage properly. We had a number of initiatives implemented both by the expert community and by our a activists. And we had a number of street artists which worked on modifying our historic historic uh, architectural heritage. Administration mostly focused on, um, on making sure that um, valuable architectural monuments remain intact and remain protected properly. And we have quite an extensive number of architectural monuments in our city. Like, in the historic center of the war of uh, Nizhny Novgorod, we have a large number of um, uh, wooden architectural objects and and uh, buildings of s stone architecture. So artists took over these buildings in order to highlight that the problem is there. Those buildings were in a very dilapidated state and uh, they were not fit for residential purposes. Late in 2017, the governor reset the agenda in terms of preserving cultural and architectural heritage. And it was decided to implement the holistic approach to the architectural heritage. That holistic approach covers a number of areas, including the regulatory and legal framework. The legal framework that covers issues of architectural heritage. And another area was making these projects economically viable or finding a different use to this, for these buildings. And we also had to reset and recreate, reinvent our, the concept of our architectural development. This map shows the boundaries of historic center of the city and of the historic city as it is. So as you can see, it's a vast area and there are two pilot segments. They are highlighted in, in color. The first one is Zapochainye territory. It's, uh, it takes, uh, the, it's a piece of land, 70, uh, 70 hectares big, and there are 70 architectural moments on that territory. There is another 107, there are another 117 buildings which are on the agenda of the government, and uh, the local government is not going to demolish these buildings. They are scheduled for restoration, and the local government wants to find some an alternative use for this building. The second territory was the uh, a quarter of well, uh, a kind of a church quarter and. The first territory is going to be redeveloped, and the second territory needs to be ap approached in a different way. That work has already been started. We currently have a number of initiatives, and we are focusing on prioritizing this project. Uh, it's not going to be a large-scale renovation project, but a set of standalone initiatives. So I wanted to tell you in, in a more detailed way about what we do on these two sides. Here is the roadmap highlighting key milestones of our redevelopment project. In, our, in 2017, uh, the governor has redefined the agenda in terms of handling uh, architectural he heritage sites. and. Uh, after that, the redevelopment project program for Nizhny Novgorod was prepared. We had a, a working group comprising local authorities, federal government, expert community was formed, and that group started working. So we had a string of meetings, different kinds of meetings. There was a lot of exchange. Uh, there was a lot of email exchange and mail exchange. Since first and foremost, we had to secure financing for this for this project. The financing was supposed to be allocated on both federal and regional level, and we had to secure support for 
our present day initiatives that were focused on preserving architectural moment in uh, architectural monuments in their pres current state so that we should keep them safe to ensure that later they can be renovated so a lot of work was done and that work was done in close and serious interaction with uh, federal authorities, local authorities, and representatives of the urban community. And our institution focuses on fostering communication between different stakeholders in the process. We are looking into the projects of uh, urban space development in small towns and cities, and we are trying to put all this experience together, and we work as coordinators within the framework of this project. We also coordinate communication with the government of the Russian Federation. So there are several areas which we have to cover within the framework of this work. We have to come up with a master plan, and at that stage, we, need, we coordinate work of various financial institutions since we have to find a viable economic model for financing this project. So we are focusing on restoring the architectural monuments as they are, on restoring the environment, and we look into the comprehensive development and reinvention of the entire territory. So we look into different opportunities to finance this project. We know that some of them can be focused, so some of them can be financed from the budget and the Minister of Culture and Minister, Minister of Construction have a number of funds, have, have some funds allocated for projects of this kind. But the whole thing is about coordination. We have to coordinate activities with financing. This is one thing that we have to do. And another one is this. As our working group progressed through the work, we came to understanding that we need certain legal changes, regulatory changes, which could and these changes were about setting the requirements for renovating or reinventing the historic territories which are scheduled for redevelopment or renovation. So as part of the sustainable de uh, urban development concept, we had to find a solution uh, to develop the territory. But, and that solution implies certain invest uh, certain obligations for, for, for the investor to preserve uh, the cultural heritage objects. So on one hand, investors were putting their money into that project. On the other hand, they were taking obligations to preserve these heritage objects. So it's, it, it, it is done in the form of a private public partnership. That program was worked out with um, public officials from the federal government, and we had a string of meetings involving our experts in Ministry of Economic Development and in Ministry of Construction, Strelka, uh, that's uh, an urban institute of Moscow, was also heavily involved. And so this is all about coming up with a comprehensive and sustainable redevelopment program under which we should have a solution for financing and designing, for financing that project and designing that territory. But apart from that, we, have to t we had to take a number of steps focused on preserving this heritage in its current state. So on one hand, we had an initiative. Uh, we had an initiative supporting our street artists, and in 2017, as, as part of the grassroots activities, we had a festival in our city, and. Our expert community, our street artists participated in this festival, and within the framework of the festival, we, de we designated a number of um, architectural 
buildings, which were supposed to be demolished as the city got prepared to the to the football world World Cup. We found a solution. We didn't want to see this building demolished, so we found a solution for that. So we we covered the buildings and the doorways of on the on the ground floors of these buildings. So we we left those buildings in place. We blocked access, unauthorized access into this building, and so we have two two blocks in one of the districts very close to the historic downtown of the center, which are preserved in this way. So we have a multidisciplinary team who is still working on this project. So we managed to protect protect these buildings for further renovation and redevelopment. What we also did was uh, Tom Sawyer Fest activities. So this is our city activists uh, have picked up this initiative, and in 2018 they picked a they picked a building within the framework of that city festival, which I mentioned, and. That was done whilst we were also working on a comprehensive plan to redevelop the territory. So in 2017, we had this Tom Sawyer Fest taking place in our city again. So it becomes part of our agenda now, and it is part of our fundraising fundraising exercise. Um, um, Nizhny Novgorod had its own stand or had its own booth at St. Petersburg International Economic Forum. And that program was also in th that program, like Tom Sawyer Fest, was also announced uh, at the stand of Nizhny Novgorod. So Tom Sawyer Fest th this year will be held on the basis of three buildings in the same in the same block. And we are getting closer to the point when the Nizhny Novgorod Urban Institute will start a, con a contest uh, or a tender for redevelopment of Zapochaya district. Uh, and we are we are expecting to see, we are expecting to see solutions for, like I said, comprehensive development of that territory. Then we will split this entire block into tendered lots, and after that, we'll look into financial side of things and we'll explore the financially viable options. So investors will have a chance to take up some of these land plots, but there will be strict conditions attached to each of these land plots. Like, for example, investor will have to take care after a particular building. So, and these buildings need to be preserved before we find an alternative use for them and before we, let's say, reinvent that territory. And in 2019, we finally have a comprehensive approach to this. And all this work is done within the framework of one single plan. Because that's the only way to do this. It is only it is only possible when you have one big team working on this, and this entire team commits all its time and all resources for improving the urban environment in our cities. That's a wonderful story. Three, three circles here remain blank. That means that you have not dealt with these issues within the framework of your roadmap. Yes, because we haven't picked the designers yet, we haven't picked the contractors yet, and we haven't picked the alternative use for, for the buildings yet. Okay. You also showed the map of Nizhny Novgorod, which 
highlighted those projects which are currently underway. So as far as I understand, some of these buildings are actually protected buildings. So they are historic monuments. And some of these buildings are owned by municipal authorities and some of them are privately owned. That's correct. And actually, that's the right question to ask. We took quite a long time to prepare to implementation of this of this program, and we took a long time to prepare it for the tender for the master layout of that district. And we spent this time sorting out issues, ownership issues, because um, land and sometimes buildings are owned by different entities, and and there are. In some cases, there are investors who have already invested into a building, and then they, they, the, the, but they are not doing anything there because part of the strategy was to buy the land plot, then wait till the historic building collapses itself, and then build something else there. So they are waiting. Uh, the, these investors are waiting for these old buildings to degrade. And then they would like to, they will use this land to build, to build whatever the city building code allows for building there. But historic, historic city environment is not just about preserving city architecture. It's it's about preserving the typology. So it's about keeping the gardens and yards and all other components which put together form this urban environment. So, so as far as I can see, you have found some way to some way to push investors take bigger liabilities when they buy the land or invest in the land yes and this mechanism is uh, this mechanism is called comprehensive urban development program so there is a big redevelopment program in place uh, under which the some of the work is financed from the budget and and but there is an option to invest for third party investors all right thank you very much and now I would like to give the floor to our third speaker, Daria Shadrina. She represents Art of Rag. Uh, it's an art festival in Vixa. Also, it's a very interesting town with, with a notable environment. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Two weeks ago, the ninth Art of Rug Art Festival came to an end. This t this festival takes place in the town of Vixa, and let me tell you something about this festival and something about our town, just to give you the context. Vix Vixa is a small town in Nizhegorodska region. It was founded in, 19, in, in, in the 19th century, and this town is built around the steel mill. So over the, for several decades, it was the steel mill, which was the heart of the town. It, uh, that steel mill produced steel for the produced rails for the first railway in Russia. Produced different components for design for exterior design of buildings. Like for example, it produced the castings and uh, cast its sculptures for for cities. Uh, so this very metal plant is the city forming. Um, 
enterprise where about 15,000 people work, and altogether we have 50,000 people of population in Vixa town. And as of now, it's high tech production, which really dictates the rules of its own to the city. And first of all, it's the request for a new level of uh, expertise of workers. And that's why it's very important to create a new city environment around the plant. And initiator of the festival was a charitable foundation, which is called OMK Participation which helps out families and kids which are gotten to difficult situations in life and we're actively involved in inclusive projects and also we are doing uh, Art Ravine uh, festival. So Art of Rock has its own mission and different purposes. First of all, it's creation of secure and dynamically developing city. It's the development of uh, social and cultural media, also development of tourism. And as of now, Art of Rock is attended. This year we had a record rate, uh, about 20,000 people who've come from different cities, Moscow, Vladimir, Nizhny, and they've been staying with us for three days at this festival. And so we are implementing this project together with the population of Vixa City. We're developing sustainable ecosystem of the city and creating a new quality of uh, city environment. Together with this foundation, OMK participation, a festival, Art of Rock, is uh, dealing with eight lines. We have a special curators on eight directions, and they are developing uh, different activities in the festival, and they are working within the whole year on those directions. So in the framework of Art of Rock, uh, we have a special strategy and purposes. It's uh, surveys in this city. It's the work on city spaces, public spaces. It's all around the year. Uh, residences or some special spaces. For example, this is a central city park of Vixa town. And mostly all the families in our town, they spend their time there. And so uh, we uh, participate in the competition for the best city environments, and VIXA won this competition in this competition. So you can see uh, the project of reconstruction, and then inside the park we opened so-called pavilion of the future, and it allows to gather people there, to hold some lectures, and to just spend some time. And then separate project, it's uh, of, of our uh, art ravine. So you can see in, uh, different, uh, they're called art Plati, so-called, or like float boat. So here you can see different uh, floaters. And a lot of tourists attend this project, this uh, kind of a uh, site. And then we created one of the uh, uh, points in the city, which really attracts a lot of city residents, and then we held again world all Russian uh, competition and different international, even artists participated in it. And we created such a bus stops, or it's just stops, or some kind of a points of attraction. And so those art objects are created uh, with metal tubes, pipes, 
And so thus we use the elements of uh, metal production, which are the symbol of the city itself. And we're actively involved in the collaboration with the local residents, and we're trying to research the uh, points of power or kind of attraction of the uh, city tenants. We're talking here about the yards of the city. They were empty before. And so now we're preparing new program, which we call Art Squares, Art Yards. And here you can see one of the examples of the artist Roman Yermakov, who creates such a uh, beauty of art objects. And we uh, show it to people not only during the festival, but on the daily basis as well. And here you can see excursions, markets, some theater, theatrical programs, workshops, craftsmen shops uh, within the festivals. And also art residents of Vixa Air, it's the main tool, I would say, to convey to the local people what does it mean, modern art. And specificity of art residency that many objects are created specifically in Vixa city. So we announced the uh, uh, competition, like the collection of the application, and different artists from all over the world come and they can create there. Uh, and this residency is opened all around the year. So you can come and watch the uh, uh, work and the process of work of any artist. And every artist is obligated to uh, hold several master classes. And also, there are some works of well known artists, uh, those. Art stay then in the uh, foundation of OMK for us to prepare some kind of a collection of the modern arts, and it will be available for city residents and just public altogether. And we create new art objects which attract tourists and they elevate the uh, level of prestige of our city. And just recently, we opened this new so-called graffiti of uh, the artist Andre Lukin. So in such a symbolic form, we can see some metal plant elements. You can see uh, different pipes, planetaries, and some metal parts. So in such a fresco, we would call it. And new art object, which just several days ago was nominated for Kandinsky Prize. Uh, all this is not a dream. So it's built in the uh, park, forest, forest park of Vixa City, you see. We put some kind of a mysterious, um, unknown, like dark, uh, some kind of a option or uh, opinion about some uh, public space as this park. And so this very object is nominated for Kandinsky Prize, as I said. So this work has been implemented all around the year, we have a special uh, creative product uh, programs, then some lectures, which is uh, opened for different ages, for younger, elderly people. The topics of those lectures are completely different. So all our curators, in obligatory way, they 
come to Vixa, they uh, conduct some lectures for promotion of your own small size business in the social networks, for example, or some kind of independent, independent uh, theater or uniting in some hip hop culture. So the topics of those lectures are completely different. And also editorial uh, publishing program where we issued special brochure, create your own city. And it was spread around 300 small towns. So this is like a manual for transformation of the city environment and how to do it in relation, in connection with the local city citizens. And also what we use as the resort of the uh, uh, local people. So they uh, file some applications, uh, then we uh, uh, look at them, we develop them, complete them, and the best of them are uh, implemented them in the framework of the festival. For example, you can see this modern uh, sculpture, it's called binary clock or watch. So this sculpture is 10 meters high. It's a music, musical installation, special sculpture. And also festival has pretty wide theatrical program. So uh, last year, a theater program, Martin Passion got special prize and also sport program is rather interesting as well. We launched new skate park and we had some uh, performance where we had um, sportsmen of international level. I'm sorry, I have to hurry you up a bit. Yeah, you see, actually, I would wrap it up with very important thing. <clears throat> which can be a really serious feature of Art Ravine. It's not just the festival. It's a joyful, fun part which is held within three years. It has special result, output. But this project has its long-term purposes and its own strategies. And then it could be implemented within the whole future year, and it's been implemented with the, uh, uh, in the collaboration with the city administration and local citizens. Yeah, what you've said, it's rather interesting. This experience is very interesting and wide uh, in relation to the creation of new objects, of new places in Vixa town. How Art of Rock keeps or helps keeping the heritage. So you see Vixa has symbols of the city, traditional symbols of the city. There is a heritage. This is this uh, metal plant. Uh, then uh, Batashov brothers uh, tower, something else. So that thus we are creating new art objects, art object, uh, objects, objects, uh, for example, it could be like uh, big walls of euros or some art objects which appear in the squares of the city. So is there any reflection, financial re influence? You see, monuments, they have not only symbolic meaning, but also some kind of a uh, financial support. Uh, is your activity helping in uh, financial support of the restoration. For example, yes, uh, that's right. S sanitar sanitary park, uh, where we will be able to see the whole collection of the um, uh, murals of wall arts. And it won't be only like a visual decoration of the walls of the uh, plant but also what could attract the tourists to the town, would attract new artists. And I guess that 
with every year the level of art uh, of people who work in such remote places Vixa is growing so it's high time to finish and I guess we have only uh, one question possibility from the audience so is there any person who wants to ask the question you see I'm visiting Nizhny Novgorod pretty often and I've been following the uh, development of urban urbanistic institute is it uh, really having some role in development of your project and do you collaborate with it we have a regional institute which supervises the uh, operation in Nizhny but as of now this very institute is following and following the projects which were uh, launched in 2018 so we implemented new approaches for preparation and development and completion of the uh, uh, objects of beautification of uh, well-being and so now we're more uh, directed on the formation of the objects of the comfortable city environment but you see urbanistic institute is formed from the local professionals activists and experts this way or another they are involved in some cross projects and they could be some kind of a uh, a frame for the uh, uh, future projects and uh, also our Institute of Urbanistics is uh, connected with Tom Sorfist as well but uh, on the legal basis institutionally those processes are not in the agenda but by the level of responsibility, all these tasks are given uh, to the Institute of the Development of City Environment of Nizhny Novgorod Oblast. So have I answered your question? I guess that in the future, uh, when the uh, task will be uh, more uh, particularized and detailized, so then uh, this collaboration will be more uh, tight. Uh, you see, as for Vixa, I would like to add a bit. It's a tremendous example, this town in Nizhny Novgorod Oblast, because their heritage, it's not really related to, like, material cultural heritage, but it's more in the uh, cross-cut of the uh, uh, social, historical activity. You see, the act the uh, life of this town was related to the production and uh, so right now when they work with non-material heritage it's the attempt to attract some attention to the real activity of town uh, for people to be really attracted to the operation of the plant uh, not only of the daily basis uh, operation of the plant but also like a industrial tourism uh, direction there are several art objects of Shukhov when we talk about some casing of the uh, uh, or shell of the construction of uh, the uh, casting workshop casting house and because we have this request and we've generated this interest which will allow to redevelop the uh, area of this district and to attract new tourist flow. So together with uh, uh, the Bureau 8 lines and others uh, in the nearest future, we'll be able to show you some examples how we work with Shukhov inheritors. And let me ask Andre a final question. If you did you work in Vixa already? No, I've never been to Vixa and 
I haven't been in Nizhny Novgorod since Nizhny Novgorod started its Tom Sorry Fest celebration. We have a very dynamic project, and under this project, we want to hand over the competence and experience to to the right people. So uh, we can see that it is working in Nizhny Novgorod. It will work in Vixe as well. A question to Andre. How do you pick up cities? How do you pick up venues for your festivals? Would you like to set up one festival in the extreme north? For example, I come from Norilsk. This is a city in the extreme north of Russia. And this year, we have the first festival, street art festival. And we do hope that this festival will will result in the city getting some really interesting artworks. So there are lo lots of buildings in in our in our city and they can they can, they can be used within the framework of Tom Sawyer festival. So it's not a question, it's actually an invitation. So feel free to come to Norilsk. So we have to draw to a close. I think that in Russia there is a big number of cities and towns like 1000 of them where Tom Sawyer fest can take place. Thank you very much for participation. And now there will be a plenary meeting in the major hall. In the major hall. So please feel free to attend. Thank you very much.